Hello and welcome to my video about energy systems. I hope this presentation will give you an insight and an understanding about the three main types of system used by the body during different sports. The first system we'll be looking at is the phosphocreatine system. Phosphocreatine system is the quickest energy system used by our bodies. It does not require oxygen but can only be used in small bursts, usually from 5 to 10 seconds. Due to the small time of usage, only one ATP is produced. If you're unsure about what ATP is, we'll be explaining it later on in the video. Three examples of sports or activities that use this system include 100 meter sprints, high jumps and long jumps. The second energy system we'll be looking at is the lactic acid system. Like the phosphocreatine system, the lactic acid system doesn't require oxygen. The difference between the two systems is the length of how long they run for and the amount of ATP produced. Unlike the phosphocreatine system, the lactic acid system is able to run between 60 and 80 seconds. The amount of ATP produced is also different. The phosphocreatine system creates about 1 ATP, while the lactic acid system creates 2 or 3. Three sporting examples of this energy system include the 110 meter hurdles, the 200 meter sprint and the 400 meter. The last energy system I will be explaining is called the aerobic system. While the phosphocreatine system and the lactic acid system are similar, the aerobic system is completely different. Unlike the previous two systems, the aerobic system does require oxygen, but is not dependent on ATP. Because of this, the aerobic system can produce from 38 to 129 ATP molecules. The main uses for the aerobic systems include marathons, triathlons, and the Tour de France. Now we're going to speak about ATP. As I mentioned earlier, this will be a brief description on what it is and what it's used for. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. ATP is a chemical that is found in all muscles. When it is needed, the muscle burns it and produces energy. This is the energy that is used to actually move the muscle. ATP is the main limitation for the phosphocreatine and lactic acid systems. Because these two processes are anaerobic, once the ATP is burned, the muscle must find a new source of energy. After all the ATP is used, the muscle begins to aspire aerobically. The new oxygen present in the muscle then reacts with the glucose to create energy, which is used to move the muscle. The bypass of burning ATP is what allows the aerobic system to be used for long periods of time. Now I've explained what each system is and what ATP is, I'm going to go through the drawbacks and limitations of each system and some of the consequences of using it too much. The recovery time of the phosphocreatine system isn't that bad. It's normally reflective of the activity you're doing. For example, a 5 second sprint may take 5 or 6 seconds to recover from. The recovery time of the lactic acid system is quite large compared with how long you use it for. It normally lasts between 60 and 80 seconds, but the recovery time is normally about an hour. The aerobic system has the longest recovery time of all other systems. If you're using the aerobic system for around 5 hours, it may take 1 or 2 days to recover fully. The main drawback of the lactic acid system is the amount of lactic acid actually produced after a long period of time. This buildup of lactic acid can sometimes cause really painful cramps. This concludes my presentation on energy systems. I hope you now have a better understanding of the three main systems and what ATP is. My reference list can be found in the video description and please feel free to comment if I've missed out anything. Thank you for listening.